Hello everybody, we're back on Jeff Live here in Washington DC uh, in the World Bank's headquarters at the 56th Jeff Council meeting. My name is Christian Hoffer and I'm doing communications for the GF, but that's not as important as Sir Bob Watson, who is sitting next to me, who is the outgoing chair of IPBS, which is the Intergovernmental Panel on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services. Um, Bob. You recently published quite a scary report. Yes, this was the work of almost 500 scientists. And what we concluded was biodiversity is extremely important for human well-being, but it's being destroyed at an unprecedented rate. Land use change, exploitation, climate change, pollution, invasive alien species. And so what we pointed out was if we continue business as usual, we'll continue to lose biodiversity and we'll continue to undermine human well-being. But there are many options for action that can make us much more sustainable in the future. For example? The first thing is we need to evolve some of our economic thinking. We need to eliminate some of the harmful subsidies that hurt the environment from agriculture, transportation, energy. We need to do multi-sectoral planning. We need to integrate or mainstream biodiversity concerns into agriculture, energy, water, transportation. We need to recognize the importance of natural capital uh, when we effectively look at our accounting systems. We also need to make sure that we involve everybody. Governments need to work with the private sector and with the civil society. So we need much more inclusive governance structures. And what does this mean for the Jeff and the Jeff's work? The evolution of the Jeff is really pleasing to see. Not only have they got thematic groups on oceans, on energy, on climate change and biodiversity, but they've got these impact programs on the food system, on sustainable cities, on sustainable forest management. These are exactly the sort of programs that are needed. Also within the uh, biodiversity program, they talk about perverse subsidies. They talk about the circular economy. These are all the right directions to go in. So when I looked at the strategy of the GF, it is very consistent with the important issues that we've identified in our assessment. Would you have any kind of like additional advice for us going forward now in the Jeff seventh replenishment period? No, I think if one could really move more and more to these issues of multi-sectoral planning, getting rid of perverse subsidies, encouraging the use of the circular economy, making sure that if you have a protected area, it's well managed, it takes climate change into consideration in its design, so, and therefore bring together the issues of climate change and biodiversity. Our assessment showed quite clearly that biodiversity and climate change are inseparable issues and must be dealt with together. Also, what we showed was that as we move forward, if we continue to lose biodiversity, if we continue to change climate, most of the UN Sustainable Development Goals will not be met. It will undermine food and water security, undermine human health, have adverse gender effects. So I think if the GF can really look at what are the interrelationships, the synergies and the trade-offs between the two big environmental issues of climate change and loss of biodiversity with all of the UN Sustainable Development Goals, it could make some real progress. When we talked before, you made a very strong point regarding climate change, biodiversity and the, the effect on development. Yes, there is actually no question that poor countries are very susceptible to climate change, very susceptible uh, to loss of biodiversity. What we have to recognise is that while climate change and biodiversity are indeed 
environmental issues. They're also economic issues. There's great value in nature. Also, the loss of biodiversity, climate change has adverse effects on the economy. They're development issues. Both climate change and loss of biodiversity are central to food security, water security, human health. There are also security issues that poor people who are the most dependent on biodiversity often are actually a disadvantage when we lose biodiversity. It leads to social conflict. It can lead to armed conflict even. It's a moral issue. We shouldn't destroy nature. Uh, so we really have to recognize that climate change and biodiversity are not simply environmental issues, which means each government has to get all of the government departments to work together. The UN United Nations system needs to get each of their agencies and programs to work together. And we need all of the big multilateral organizations to work together. So we need a real change of governance and it must include the private sector and civil society. And what can individuals do, those who are watching it right now on Facebook, what is your advice, what they could contribute? Individuals have multiple roles. All of us can use our resources more wisely. Don't waste food, don't waste energy, uh, try and use mass transportation or cycling or walking. Think through what your choice of diet is. It affects your own human health and uh, food choices have a big effect on the environment. But even more important, recognize that biodiversity and climate change are really key issues that all of us should be interested in. Make sure your voice as an individual is heard by politicians. Tell the politicians that they need to address climate change. Tell the politicians they need to address loss of biodiversity. Tell the private sector you want them to be socially and environmentally sustainable, that you want to buy products that are sustainable products. So an individual can choose both its consumption patterns, what it purchases, and it can have a voice in what the private sector produces and what governments do. Sir Bob Watson, thank you so much.